Hey, everybody. Happy Monday. Welcome back to studying the Bible. And we're going through Genesis chapter 48, 49, and 50 today. And I'm, I'm, I want to focus on the last half of 50. Um, God's good purposes, right? So Joseph's brothers saw that their father had had died. And they said, it must be Joseph. It, it, it may be that Joseph will hate us and pay us back for all the evil that we did to him. Now, if you know the story, Joseph's brothers sell him into slavery because they are so jealous of him because Joseph's father loved him, gave him the coat of many colors, just put him in a place of honor. And the brothers hated him for it. They were jealous. And they said, let's just get rid of him. And so they, they got rid of him and then lied to their father and said, hey, a lion ate him, right? Tore him apart. And they thought it was done and over with. And over the weekend, if you read through the text in Genesis, which I hope you did, um, Joseph, he gets sold into slavery, but he ends up becoming number two in the land of Egypt. He's he's literally the vice president of the nation, right? So he's number two in command. And the brothers come in and they they meet Joseph, but they don't know it's Joseph, but Joseph knows it's them. And he goes through this rigorous test to test them to see what kind of people they are. And they end up getting saved from a famine because Joseph was number two. Joseph had done all the preparation to have all the food, all the, the necessary things there to keep people alive during the famine. And so they they then reunite and it's it's just a it's a family homecoming event. Everybody comes together. It's like a you know a, a Christmas Hallmark movie. Everybody's like comes together like, oh my gosh, you're still alive. Dad's gotta know. Dad comes in, they all hug and everybody's excited, right? So this is the 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 excitement. Families back together. The boys are back in town. Brothers are reunited. Father is reunited with son. Everybody's happy, right? And Joseph's number two in the land. He, he's in charge. He's number two in the whole land, right? And so now Joseph's father dies. And immediately, remember we talked about this last week. These brothers go into self talk mode. No, and they think the worst, right? They think the worst is about to happen. Man, oh man, Joseph, now that the only thing that was protecting us, the only thing that was buffering us was dad being here. Now that dad's gone, Joseph is going to go full dictator and he's going to destroy us. Like this is, this, so the brothers start talking. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, it may, remember here, here's, it may be, that Joseph will hate us and pay us back for all the evil he we did to him. So they're thinking, listen, we, we know what we did was wrong. We know it's bad. And we feel like man, Joseph's going to be vindictive and he is going to just lay the hammer. He's going to lay the hammer down. So they sent a message to Joseph saying, your father, so they're, they're, they, they try to manipulate and twist, right? This, listen, Dad gave a command before he died. Listen, this is what dad's dying wish. Please forgive the transgressions of your brothers and, and their sins because they did evil before you. Now, please forgive the transgressions of the servants of God, of your father, Joseph. And then, so, so they, they're like, okay, we got to figure this out. Let's send a message to, hey, dad said to forgive the boys for what we did, right? Our bad, right? And here's the beautiful thing about God's purposes and God's plans. I love this. Joseph, what? Wept when they spoke to him. So he's he's sad over this. Obviously, these things get brought back up in your head. And he says that he doesn't go into full rage mode or dictator mode that says, I'm going to take you out. I'm going to get revenge. Because Christians don't get revenge. Christians are called to forgive. Christians are called to, to be different. When, when things go bad, when things are bad, even the bad stuff is meant for good. How do we know? Because 
The Bible tells us so. Romans chapter 8 gives us all things work together for good for those who fear and love the Lord, right? Verse 18, his brothers also came and fell down before him and said, behold, we are your servants. So they're, they're throwing themselves at the mercy of their brother and saying, listen, we, listen we, we, we did wrong. We were evil. It was wrong. They repent. They have a repentant heart, right? Verse 19, Joseph said to them, do not fear. Like, I love this idea. The idea of do not fear is all throughout the text. 300, over 365 times in the Bible, God tells his people, don't be afraid. Like, we don't have to be afraid. This is the beauty of being in Christ. Romans chapter 8, verse 1 says, therefore, now there is no condemnation for those that are in Christ. So if you're in Christ, there's no condemnation. You are secure. You are safe. You are you're loved. So Joseph tells his brothers, do not fear, for I, am I in the place of God? So in other words, am I God? Am I God? No, I'm not. Don't be afraid. I'm not going to, like, I'm not the guy that's going to judge you here. But here's, here's what I'm going to tell you I learned out of this. What you meant for evil against me, you meant all this for evil. As, as for you, you meant evil against me. You hated me. You wanted things bad to go. You hated me and wanted me to die. You wanted me to, you sold me into slavery, guys. So yeah, what you meant was evil. But God's bigger and better than you. What was meant for evil by you, God meant it for good. And to bring it about that many people would be kept alive as they are today. Do not fear. I will provide for you and your little ones. Thus, he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. What a, what a radiant picture of a Christian, of, of a God-fearing, Christ-honoring man. He does not take vengeance against those who are, have done evil towards him. He doesn't say, okay, you know what? You sold me into slavery. You did this. So guess what? I'm in charge here. I'm going to make your life a living hell. He doesn't do that. He says, listen, what you, I don't want to negate this. What you did was evil. But God's greater than the evil in the world. And this evil that you meant towards me, God took that and flipped it, flipped it on its head and God meant it for good and took an evil moment and flips it on its head and turns it into a, a righteous moment and brings it about that many people would be kept alive. God preserves life and used me and used you in this circumstance to keep others alive. So here's the deal. Don't be afraid. I'm not going to take vengeance on you. I love you. You're my brothers. And not only this, and here's the real testament. You might be able to take care of me, but when you start taking care of my kids, that's a different ball game. It's one thing to take care of me. It's another ball game that you, you completely want to take care of my boys and my girl. You want to take care of my kids? I'm like, listen, you got a special place at my table. You, you love me one is one thing, but you loving my kids. That's huge. Joseph does the same thing. Do not fear. I will provide for you and for your little ones. And thus he comforts them. This is the beautiful message of the gospel is that Christ comes in and he comforts his kids. He comforts and provides for his children. He loves and provides for his children. This is the beauty of the gospel that he comes in and he does this and he speaks kindly to them. And here's, here's what they did. And they, they did the whole self-talk, just like you and I do so often. No, oh, it's going to be bad. It's going to be awful. Oh my gosh. Things are going bad this year. I can just feel it. Oh my gosh. I can just feel bad things. Stop. Stop trusting in what might happen and believe what is going to happen. God will take care of his children. God will take care of his people trust in that. And I'm telling you, it's going to be smooth sailing. It's going to be a great week. I believe it. Love y'all.